We're going to take you through putting a Yamaha drive 3-inch spindle lift on a new car. Now this car has the body off of it, but you will not have to take the body off. But you want to take a car jack underneath the steering box and jack up the front of the car and remove the front wheels and tires. I'm going to remove the cotter key and then with a 19 millimeter socket I'm going to remove the nut that's holding the hub onto the screen. Now you want to save these for reinstallation of the hub onto the new spindle. All right, now you're going to remove the cotter pin from steering arm. the steering arm that's holding your uh, tie rod end to the steering arm. And then with a 17 millimeter wrench on top and a 17 millimeter socket, you want to Take unattach the tie rod end and save these bolts for reinstallation when you're going to hook it to the new jig steering arm. Move the cotter pin from the bottom of the king pin that's holding the spindle. Then with a 14 millimeter socket wrench and, wrench and a 14 millimeter socket. 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter. Remove, remove the king, king pin bolt. to pull the spindle from the car. Now you want to save the kingpin, the cotter keys, and the top and bottom seals for reinstallation of the new spindle. Now he also just removed from the spindle the kingpin tube, which we'll show you here, goes into the new Jake spindle. The next step is installing the driver's side steering arm to the driver's side spindle using the 5 16th by 2 and a half bolts with nylocks and then the button head bolt there's a threaded hole it actually goes to the top inner hole on the spindle and tighten. securely tightened now we're going to lube up Slightly tap in, you don't flush. The center pin must be flush. Yep. We're ready to install it to the cart. Now one more thing I want you to see is that the steering arms are side specific. Once they're installed to the spindle, the hole for your tie rod end will, port toward, will point towards the center of the car. As shown. Install the stock bottom and top dust caps to the new Jake spindle and slide into position on the strut using the stock kingpin, nut and cotter pin. Install your new spindle to the car. Security tightness. All right. All right, using the stock kingpin, 14 millimeter on top, 14 millimeter. Securely tighten the spindle to the car and remember to put your cotter key in the bottom. Now we're ready to hook the tie rod end up to the steering arm. Your factory tie rod end came from the top when the cart was non-lifted. You're going to turn that now and we're going to bring it in from the bottom through the hole in the steering arm and using the same 17 millimeter wrench and ratchet securely tighten, tighten the tie rod end to the steering arm. And once again, do not forget to put your cotter key back in. Pre-lube the axle on the spindle and we're going to reinstall our stock hub the same way we took it off with the number 19 socket with the number that you number 19 socket securely tighten 
cotter pin, reinstalled, and then cap, reinstall cap. your dust cap. Now, now your ready to driver side is done and ready to put your wheel on. Do the same thing for the passenger side of the car. Follow the same steps. Now we're going to so move to the rear. The spindle has a grease fitting on the front using regular Insta regular premium wheel bearing grease. Install until you parts, probably see it coming out. You to fill up that kingpin. Fill up the kingpin housing. And do the same on the passenger. You got it. And you're ready to install your wheels and tires. All right, we're ready to start the rear. As you can see, we already jacked it up. Take the jack on under the rear cross member, lift it up, and then you also want to take jack stands, sit the cart down on the jack stands, lift it up with the frame, remove your wheels and tires. As you can see, we got the body off of this car. But you don't have to take the body off, but it is a little tight fitting in the rear. The first step you want to do is using 14 millimeter. You want to unattach the top stock shock mount from both the driver and passenger side. This is going to allow us to drop the rear. Once you have the, the top stock uh, shocks loose, you want to move your jack from the cross member to underneath the rear which will put all the weight on the rear and now you're going to be able to drop the rear end down to install our new shock mount in the top. You want to take your goal post and you want to slide it into place. Now there is a front and rear to the goal post. As you can see the J there's a the J in the middle of the goal post. This goes to the rear of the car and take and slide your goal post into place in the top stock shock mount location using the stock top shock bolts securely install the goal post to the car. Using the supplied 3 8 by 2 bolts securely tighten the top of the shock into the new shock mount as shown on both sides of the car. Use a 916 wrenches and sockets securely tighten. Once this is done, we're ready to move to the rear sway bar mount. You want to use a 17 wrench and a 17 socket and unattach the stock rear sway bar from the sway bar mount. Take Jake's new sway bar mount and we're going to attach it to the frame using the half by one with a lock nut to the stock sway bar mount. Now using that as a guide, drill down through bagwell hole. We need to drill down through the bagwell hole with what size, Mike? 3 8 With a 3 8 drill bit to enlarge that bagwell hole to attach the sway bar mount completely to the car. Drill's in a bag. Using two three quarter wrenches, securely tighten Top. the sway bar to the sway bar mount. Two nine sixteen wrenches, tighten up bagwell bolt. We're tightening up the bagwell bolt. What size bolt are we using there, Mike? Three eight by three. Three eight by three bolt with flat washer and nylon. Securely tighten it to the frame. This is where you just enlarge the bagwell hole, and then reattach the sway bar to the new sway bar mount. Securely with tighten all bolts. Now that the lift kit's installed, we have to align the front end. What we have to do is check the toe. And how you do that is you pick out a tread on your tire and measure across from driver side to passenger side the front portion of the front tires. Get your measurement. Now you come to the rear portion of the front tires and measure across from driver to passenger side make sure you use the same tread that you're coming off of and on this particular car the measurement is one inch greater in the rear than it is the front when the toe is properly set 
we want it to be one eighth inch narrower in the front than it is the rear. So now we're going to show you how you make the adjustments to get your proper alignment. In this particular car, the passenger side tire is towed in more than the driver side tire. So what we got to do is take our wrench and loosen the jam nut on the tie rod end. This is going to free up the tie rod and allow us to turn it to make the proper adjustment. Okay, now you want to place your wrench on the hex of the tie rod. And this cart needs towed out a little more, so we're going to turn it counterclockwise, which is going to pull the rear portion of the front tire in while pushing the front part of the front tire out. Now once you're done, you're going to have to remeasure again in the front part of the tires and the rear part of the tires. And remember, when all is said and done, you want to be one eighth inch narrower in the front than the rear. And then take and tighten up your jam nut when the front end is completely aligned. What he's doing right now is just double checking his front end with a toe gauge that we made here, making sure that the front end is lined. The front of the car is an eighth inch narrower than the rear portion of the front tires. Once you got the proper toe set, it's always a great idea just to go double, double check, go back through all your nuts and bolts to make, make sure everything is securely tightened.